All right, so welcome everyone. This is our flexibility and mobility class. So I'm um, glad you guys are here. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our facial exercises, then transition down our body on the chair, and then uh, make our way up, stand up, do some stretches there. Um, and then we'll end up on the floor with some of the more relaxing stretches. I feel like if we start with the floor exercises, we're just gonna fall asleep on the floor and not really wanna get up after. So let's go ahead and start with our jaw. Okay, so open that jaw really wide then shut it. Once you look all the way up as far as your neck and your head allow it, close that jaw. So bring your chin to towards your nose. So you should feel a nice long stretch on your neck, okay? We'll do about 10 to 12 of these. My beard's um, coming along now and it's growing, so I don't, you can't see my double chin so much anymore. Sure you're comfortable, make sure you're breathing. And then also try to um, have that um, mind to muscle connectivity. So just try to really, don't try to think about what you have going on the rest of the day. Really try to focus on the movement that you're doing right now. And um, there's been studies when that's done, you usually get better results. Very good. All right, so you should have that jaw a little bit um, active now, a little bit sore. So let's go ahead and start with our just palpating from the end of our eyes to the end of our lips. Yeah, we're ce celebrating um, Jillian's first birthday next weekend. So. Whoa. Yeah, so. It's almost one. So this weekend, we're celebrating our one year of living here. If you guys know me, I've been living at many places since COVID started. <laughs> I've had these classes from different locations. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of nice to be at one place for a year. All right, now let's go from our earlobes to the end of our lips. So yeah, so next week, uh, we're going to go ahead and baptize him and also um, celebrate his first birthday. So my mom's making a bunch of pupusas. Um, we're, we're also getting our local elote on street corn um, guy with this cart to come out here and you know, also feed our folks, I think. What else? I don't know, but my wife loves hosting. I don't. And um, so whatever she wants to do, I guess we'll just go ahead and do. All right. Very good. All right. This one, um, again, seems very basic, but it could become a bit tiresome. So we're just going to go ahead and just fill our cheeks with air and then just switch that air um, back and forth. And then also once that gets a little bit fatigued, because it will, um, I want you to move your air pocket from the upper lip to the lower lip. Okay. Hey, Jan. Hello. <laughs> I love when half the screen is, you know, a video feed and not so much um, dark screen. Appreciate you guys. All right, so let's go up and down with that pocket of air. All 
Right. Very good. Okay, now we're going to transition. Oh, actually, let's palpate. So let's go ahead and fill up those cheeks and just kind of rub the backside of your knuckles. Just ride on them gently. These might be a little sore around the cheek area, so just keep that in mind. It'll probably become less sore if you guys um, practice those movements um, again, maybe a couple of times throughout the week. All right, now we're going to start with our neck exercises. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do that. So just gently up to right, take some deep breaths. Right now, up and down. Gently up and down. Down this way, Elena, Karen, Victor, Bill, welcome everyone. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and do our next circles gently, okay? So just make sure either your chin is making contact with your upper chest or your ears contact with your shoulders and that back of the head, the upper back. So should be having contact. Unless you're really stiff, you just gotta work that neck out a little bit more. All right, switch, switch directions. So I was letting you guys know on Monday that my car was a mess and I fixed that, that noise it had. It just needed some oil, which I kind of feel silly because I, I just counted that out as an issue. And sure enough, it put some oil and it's running smooth. But now I think Sharice, you might have jinxed me. Um, let's go ahead and sit on our left hand, right hand over our head on that left ear and just allow that right elbow to drop. You should feel that stretch on your left side of your neck. You wanna make sure you're sitting on that left hand though. Otherwise you're just gonna allow your, your torso to lean. So yeah, so um, I, I now think I have an alternator problem. So, <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, no. Yeah. Charisse was oh like, Oh my gosh. Hopefully it's I'm not sorry. the best. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh no. Well, so, I told you that one, that mechanic's pretty reasonable and honest. <laughs> yeah. So, what, I'm what's just city like, do you live in? Um, what city oh do my you gosh. In? I'm sorry, Melana. What city do you live in? I live in um, Lakewood. Oh, okay. I have a I have a great mechanic in um, reasonable, very reasonable, but in Santa Ana. Okay. Oh. I don't I don't mind driving to that area. I actually went to a spot in Gardena, the opposite way, but that's about the same distance. Um, but yeah, it's um, sometimes I don't do it so much. I think I, but I've done it since I've met you guys. Um, I sometimes go and do these um, races out in the desert in Baja California with some some teams and I don't know anything about cars I just know like the basics and whatever YouTube tells me um let's grab the back of the head and then drop that elbow forward so um so this one time I was helping now with this Volkswagen little car you guys know the 
the bugs from like the 60s or the 70s. Oh, yes. So <laughs> that's so, a great specialty. Yeah, they're, they're nice little cars and they could handle a lot. So we were working on this car and um, they just loaded it with a ton of lights. So like it had a bunch of lights because you're out in the desert for 500 miles. So this next one, we're gonna go, um, go ahead. Oh, actually, we're gonna do our turtle heads here. So elbows, shoulders back and then head forward and back. It might feel a little silly or look silly, but we're just warming up that neck before we do the more intense ones. So yeah, so they loaded up this car with a bunch of um, lights and so you could see it and there's no, you know, just be safe. And there's a bunch of other electronics attached to it. And usually for these races, I mean, these it's a very expensive hobby. Um, you know, they a little 60, uh, a buck from the 60s every race. And there's like five or six races a year. They probably invest about $30,000 in it for every race. So they hooked up this car and apparently the alternator, which distributes the power from the battery, it's like the, the brain of the electric system of the car just um, blew out because there's so much um, power being distributed at once. So um, anyways, um, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. If you guys do have that um, towel, go ahead and grab it. So or if you have an old shirt, I'm going to use my hoodie that I have right now. So yeah, so so my car now it's stuttering a little bit, um, you know, when and it's time to start the car. So we're just gonna roll up whatever um, item you have. Like I said, I have my hoodie here, so I'm just gonna have this, have the sleeve sticking out. That middle part, I'm gonna try to tuck in right in the center of my neck. And now I'm using my sleeve. So right sleeve, right hand, left sleeve, left hand. And I'm just gonna go ahead and then just go towards my left side. So I want to almost pull with my right hand. So I'm going left, but I'm pulling with my right to get a little bit more of a stretch. If you breathe comfortably, you should get a little bit more range of motion. Relax. Your arms should get a little bit tired from that pulling. So yeah. Um, Let's go ahead and do the left side now. So now that left hand that is pushing, instead of pulling, you're gonna be pushing and you get that range of motion. When we're doing this, we also don't wanna turn our torso too much. Okay, so we wanna just make sure that our head is getting a lot of that motion. You're gonna turn a little bit, but we just don't wanna like rotate from our hips. That makes sense. It does help um, if you have a longer towel as well. But, uh, and then now we're gonna make sure that we're fixed here. We're gonna pull forward and then we're gonna recline back. So now we're, our hands are coming up. And this you want to hold for about 20 seconds. This one will actually repeat three times. Relax, just breathe a little bit. Yeah, so my wife was driving yesterday and she said that the radio so suddenly turned off, um, that you know the lights went off for a second. So it just sounds like an alternator issue. Unless I need a new battery. Let's go again. It's always when the wife's driving that the car does something. Yeah. I, I get so upset. I tell my husband, I go, every time I'm driving it, it goes out. Even when I drive his car, that, it, everything goes wrong when I'm driving it. <laughs> <laughs> Last. Yeah, when uh, my buddy who's a mechanic came over, you know, my car's been making this noise for three weeks. He shows up, no noise. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's like, I can't diagnose it if nothing's wrong with it. I'm like, no, something is wrong with it. All right, last time here. 
I mean, yesterday I took it out for a spin and I noticed the stuttering at the beginning. So it could be the battery, it could be an alternator, it could be the starter. And then, um, but it didn't do that um, radio shut off, but yeah, I'm just like, uh, hopefully it could last a little bit longer past Jillian's birthday and those expenses. And then the car can be uh, March's problem <laughs> and March's fix, so. All right, so it was just a battery for my car. Greg, uh, Mr. Mechanic, oh, it's just the battery. Let's fix it. And then he, I go, then you drive it. As soon as he drove it, he goes, it's not the battery. At least <laughs> it happens with him. Yeah. Let's um, let's go ahead. So now, so we had our right on our right sleeve, left on that left sleeve. So now we're going to switch. Okay, so my right hand grabs the left sleeve, left hand grabs that right sleeve. Okay, and this one, you're going to get a little bit more range of motion. Remember, if there's any pain at any point, um, then just relax, okay? So what we're gonna do is, since we have that opposite side, you should get more range of motion. So now that right arm, you're gonna pull it towards your right side. And that left hand, you're just gonna pull it down on that left sleeve. Okay, and we're gonna do 10 repetitions of five seconds. Okay, so we're gonna relax, we're gonna come back. back. So do 10 of those. Yeah, the, the best part of all, all of this, trying to solve what's wrong with the car. You know, the main culprit was uh, just needed oil. My wife's looking at new cars to buy. I'm like, no, we don't need a new car. <laughs> I was like, do not, like, especially right now. It's like $80 for an oil change. And now cars are so expensive. It's Hopefully your neck feels a little better, Melinda. Oh, I have relaxed. Your arms could get a little tired depending on how hard you're playing. All right, so now we're gonna go again, same, same thing. We're gonna go ahead and grab that left sleeve with the right hand, right sleeve with the left hand, and now we're gonna pull with that left. Remember, you're pulling down with that left sleeve. more wow. all right and that's all i got for you for the neck right now so um i've had some neck issues a couple months ago and right now what we just did kind of solved that problem so hopefully if you guys are feeling any little aches um I'll hopefully we got some of them out so um, if you guys want to continue with those because your neck um, does feel a little bit stiff throughout the day, I would recommend what we just did, maybe another um, two times throughout the day, maybe around, I don't know, two or three o'clock and then right before bed. And then if you still wake up with a, a sore neck uh, first thing in the morning, you kind of want to just um, work that out. So, all right, very good. So now this one's for your upper back, transitioning down to your shoulders. Um, we're going to have Make a, a fist, a Power Ranger fist right here, out in front of you, chin down, and then push that fist in front. And then relax, bring that head back up, then chin down, push forward. 
that. Yeah. Again. Again. Let's do two more. Again. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, now we're gonna transition again um to that shoulder upper back. So we're gonna just do these wide arms here. About ten of these. Share breathing. Very good. All right, before our arms get a little bit too tired, we're gonna go ahead and just do some shoulder circles. So we're just here and we're just kind of rotating our shoulders forward, down, up, and over. Clockwise motion right now. Uh, let's go counter, so in reverse. Awesome. So let's actually take a little water break. We're 30 minutes in. Hydrating. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our shoulder press motion. Just hands here, bring up. If you're not very active in the weight room or aren't in our Monday class, this actually might feel like a little workout. So sometimes just the weight of your arms could be enough to, you know, there's a, a lot of um, just body workouts one of those that if you're used to it with dumbbells or resistance bands, it might seem more like a stretch. The same, just like when we lift on your way up, exhale, way down, inhale. Good. All right. Kind of give our shoulders a little break. So we'll go between arms and shoulders right now. Right arm across. Cool. If your Saturday is looking pretty boring and you don't have much going on, um, I will be at a track meet at Soka University this weekend. The track meet runs from about 11 a.m. to about 6 p.m. Um, you don't, don't have to be there at all. Uh, or I mean, not that, not the entire meet, 
But um, yeah, if you guys just want to see some, let's switch some high performance college athletes. Um, yeah, that's in Silk University, which is, I believe it's like South Orange County, Laguna, like Laguna Hills area, Mission Viejo. All of my athletes compete around 11, 12 o'clock in the morning. And then I have one athlete competing at five. So I think between that four hour window, there's a lot of trails around there. So I might just go on like a two or three hour hike and get a little workout. Very good. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the shoulders. So I'm gonna come up on here in front of you and then we're gonna separate. Try to go far back as you can. Let's go as far back as you can. So over the weekend, uh, I met my my buddy's um, brother-in-law. He's a you know big military guy that um, uh, he's, I think he has his duties still. But when he's back home, he he does a lot of hiking. So he is telling me that um, I should join him on the first 77 miles of the Pacific Crest Trail. So um, he would start pretty much at the border with Mexico and then finish off by that little town of Julian, San Diego. Um, so I might do that, but he says it's a three-day journey. Um, so yes, I just have to fit that in the schedule somewhere, but that'd be cool to do. So. All right, so we did elbows, we did shoulders. Now let's move down to arms, okay? So we can do our little tricep push downs here. So again, these feel very easy. So if you're at the gym simulating this, this would be where you have the cable attachment pretty much over your head. It has a little pulley system with the bar, and you would grab on the bar and push it down. And that would um, work out your triceps. I'm doing this motion here without any weights, it's stretching out these triceps. Very good. All right, so palms facing the screen. We're just going to go opposite chest now, working that lateral side of the bicep. All right, now we're gonna do our door openers, okay? So tuck in that elbow and out as far as you can. So it's easy to bring that fist towards your body, but it's a little bit harder to separate it away. When you do that, you'll feel a little bit more of a stretch in that outside part. So this is about 12 of these. Arms. Very good. All right, just lateral shoulder raises here. Again, I know we did the this motion here earlier, but that required our palms to be facing the camera. And our palms are facing the floor when we reach parallel. 
So when we do that, it's working out or stretching a different area of the shoulder. So that's kind of why we want to make sure that we um, do these exercises correctly or at least um, pay attention where your hands are facing. Because if you do lateral shoulder raises with dumbbells here, you have one type of shoulder workout, but then let's say you rotate your hands or your palms are facing the camera, that would be a different shoulder workout. Okay, the same here. So now we're gonna go up. So there's variations here too. You could have thumb up, those palms are facing towards the floor. And if I brought them up and make my palms face each other, that works out a different side of the shoulder. If you have them upright where the palms are facing the ceiling, that's a different part too, actually activating your, your chest as well. So um, there's a lot, you know, if you feel like you're limited to what workouts you could do with the equipment that you have with, at home, you'd be surprised you just make these little adjustments and um, it becomes a different um, lift. All right, let's go ahead and then, uh, yeah, let's, if you have a back wrist on your chair or the bottom side, let's go ahead and reach and then just turn, keep your, your knees facing forward, hold. Awesome. Okay. And do our cat scratching pose here. So remember, sit back. Your hips never leave the chair. Arms up reach in front of you from the very top, fully extended all on the way to the floor. And tuck back in. Make sure your hips don't leave the chair. Have one more. Awesome. Continue with our my favorite stretch, performance stretch. Right heel on the left knee. Try to sit near the edge of the chair, just so you have a little bit more range of motion when dropping that knee up there. Now right here, just hanging out. So for some of you guys, this might be enough of a stretch. I know when I'm not active or I take a couple of weeks off from working out, um, this I struggle lifting my right ankle to my left knee. Let's push down on that right knee. Right knee. Shouldn't be painful. Remember, none of these should be painful. Might be a little uncomfortable, but they shouldn't cause pain. That right knee up. Okay. Okay, 
kind of feel right that that real side of me needs to go ahead and switch. Push down that left knee. Bring that knee up. Happy belated birthday, Cherise. Just remember, it is yesterday, right? So. Like, why does she have balloons in the background? Yes, thank you. I didn't ask for those balloons. Okay. <laughs> I didn't want the numbers. Just cut them in half. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> thank That's you. Coming back, bring that knee up, and then again, just do these leg extensions. All right, once you've done that, we're just going to do these push outs here. So, this one might actually feel like a workout. So, this would be the motion of a leg press. Okay, let's switch. So, left leg, bring that knee up first, and then start extending. Before we start transitioning down, let's do the hip openers. So sit near the edge of the chair. Let's bring that right knee off to the side. And we want to push out with that right hand to that right knee. Again, we're torsos forward, left knee's forward, then right knee comes out as far as we can bring it out without any issues. Switch. Very good. You haven't done the next one in quite some time, but I like it. It's not very, doesn't have a lot of range of motion, but pretty much what we're gonna do is just slightly uh, from behind your thigh, just slightly pick it up so it's floating. And then we're just gonna go left to right. So it's not much movement that we get here, but right here we're working our LCL, and our MCL. So you don't wanna move your thigh like this. You just kinda wanna make sure that the thigh stays, you know, pretty um, static that lower leg, it's a little bit of movement. 
Okay, we don't see too much movement because that ligament is pretty short and it doesn't um, allow too much range of motion. So when you see lateral movement, when um, athletes are moving, um, let's go ahead and switch. And athletes, especially soccer players, basketball players, football players are moving side to side and they get hit. And that bottom leg is, or lower leg is planted. They get um, hit on the one of the sides. You know, it's not that long of a ligament, so it's gonna go ahead and tear. So you guys might be like, well, I don't play football or you know, basketball or soccer, but I'm sure sometimes you guys uh, move side to side, or let's say you trip over something while you're moving side to side. Um, you, you could hurt yourself, so you don't want to keep that ligament a little active. Right. Here we're just going to do some drill raises, 20 pumps, keep those Achilles and calves active. Now, heels are planted, toes come up. So now you should feel that anterior tibialis muscle. If you put your hands right there in front of your lower legs, you should feel it activating. Probably a muscle that doesn't get too much love in the weight room. Be active with this when you're walking around or running but outside of that resistance work unless you're doing something like this with calf raises um the wheel machine it's pretty challenging to not challenging it's just like i said just doesn't get a lot of attention so all right uh we're gonna go ahead and do our abcs okay so just keep that leg floating just do the shapes of the letter of the alphabet lowercase or cursive. I don't think much people, uh, do they even teach cursive writing anymore? That's cool. I remember, um, well, my mom still kind of does, but my friends grew up in El Salvador and they had super, super nice penmanship because uh, I think a lot of it was you know, for clerical work or, you know, just for um, blueprints. Things had to be like super legible. So, yeah, both of them had super nice um, writing. I'm going to switch. And then my cursive was just like hideous. You know, I can't understand my own. And I was like, why do we have to do all these loops? But um, yeah, I mean, I don't see uh, little ones learning it anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing, or maybe not. But I don't see it. Awesome. Um, let's go ahead, and if you could find me a cam good tennis ball, golf ball. Um, let's go ahead and find that so we could roll out our arches. So then I'm just gonna go ahead, tennis ball there, I mean golf ball. I'm just gonna roll back and forth. Julia, yes. Uh, in some districts, they still teach cursive writing, and others they don't. Okay. Well, it do depends you know on your school. Or... It depends on your school district. It's not a requirement by the state, although it is taught in third grade generally. Okay. Yeah. I just remember um, my mom. You know, she had a ton. She had many um, foster children, 
they had probably over 200 in like a 14 year span. And I would help them out with their homework sometimes and I wouldn't see any cursive or they would sometimes confuse me. The way I learned math and the way they were teaching them now was a little bit different. Um, you still get the same results, <laughs> but I was like, I don't understand how you guys, you know, I don't want to teach them the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah, I guess teaching modalities just change over time. Sometimes. All right, let's switch. That's a little bit more in, in my opinion, they should teach it because if you don't know it and somebody wrote something in cursive, you won't understand it. That's, yeah, that's very true. It's going to look like hieroglyphics for some people. Yeah, and also it's good for hand motor coordination. I mean, I, I would hand-eye motor coordination. Yeah. I taught my daughter very young, like we'd have these little books that she would trace the stuff and I made it kind of like a game for her. Okay. Was she homeschooled or just little? No, no, she wasn't homeschooled. I just did, I'm a teacher, so I always played yeah. like teacher games with her, you know? I try to make it fun. Yeah, of course. I printed out really beautiful fonts from my computer, big. Nice. And and now she's an artist, so <laughs> there you go. I guess it worked out. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, if you have socks on, I would suggest removing them. We're gonna work on some arch work. If you don't have socks and you're just chilling at home, go grab a little small rag. But um, all right, Sharice is barefoot already. <laughs> she went off the screen. So again, we're just going to go ahead and grip the sock or the small rag and then just drop it. Again, just working on those tendons or arches. So again, if you're flat footed like me, you come out of a pool and it looks like Donald Duck was in the building. Um, then you want to make sure that you're doing these often because you could develop plantar fasciitis. Um, if you sometimes wear shoes with the big drop, so high heel shoes, or if you have orthotics, um, I would also recommend these. So, or if you're just on your feet a lot, you know, especially on, I don't know about you guys, but if you've been to um, Disneyland, for an entire day, you know, the day after is pretty painful. Your feet, yeah, you got to plan accordingly which shoes you're going to wear at Disneyland or any amusement park or outing. So, all right, then we're going to switch. And of course, my left arch is not as strong as my right. So I have terrible, I guess, cat-like grip here. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to throw those in. We're about an hour in to our class. Need a little bathroom break. Excuse me if that's too much information. But yeah, a little break. And then um, we'll go ahead and start with our stand up stretches and transition down to our floor exercises. So you guys could put the chair away. Or actually, just keep it handy because we could do some hip range of motion stuff. But yeah, let's regroup in two minutes. We'll continue. So, so that's all quick.
Hmm. Ready. Okay. So this next one, we're going to go ahead and uh, use a counter, a doorway, a post. We're going to stretch out our chest. Okay, stretch out a little doorway. A corner of a wall that separates. I'm just gonna uh, excuse me. here. My hand is flat right here, and I'm just gonna rotate my body. A nice stretch. Right here, I'm parallel to it, and I'm just turning my body to my right. Hmm. Sorry, so some of you guys are just coming back. Just find a counter, place your hand flat, and then just rotate your body to your right. Relax, stretch on that inside part of your arm, maybe even your pecs. Now we're going to go ahead and lay our entire forearm on that post, okay? And then we're going to rotate. So you should feel that a little bit more in the shoulder. Mm. Awesome. All right. Now place that right hand. So you might have to switch position. Curl out and then turn to your left. All right, using that same counter, you have your chair nearby. I'm just going to go ahead and use the counter. And just here's my chair, the top side of the chair. I have a little bit more range of motion on the hips. So um, if you feel like you're not comfortable bringing your leg this high, maybe use the bottom part where you sit. But um, if you're good with your hips, and we're just going to go forward, glide, and then reverse glide. Very good. Once you've done that, you can sit this way. Like a little tighter. Awesome. All right, go ahead and find me a broom, a pole, foam roller, something long and rigid so we could work out our shoulders a little bit.
All right, once you're ready, let's go ahead, have full ready, and then let's just go left to right. All right, focusing on the left shoulder first, go ahead and push that full higher, that left arm to get a little bit more range of motion. So 30 degrees forward. Big state. Straight forward. Now back. The left arm swing back. Right shoulder now comes out to your side. Thirty degrees. Go back. All right. Okay, now we're going to go behind the back. Going back, and go back. I hear a little pop. I got. It. All right, and then now we're bringing the bar up our back. It's up with the left. Put that away. Let's put up our yoga mat. Have them ready. Yes. Yes. Right, we're going to go ahead and do our cat cow stretch. So, little cues to point out first before we start. Let's have your hands, your wrists right below your shoulders. Tap your knees right below your hips. Okay. And then we're going to inhale, arch up. Exhale, body button towards the floor. Inhale. Up. Let's do eight of them. Put that mind to muscle connection.
Alright, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to, from here, from where we are, keep your hips over your knees. Kind of walk over with your hands. Take as far as you can. Drop your elbows. And just drop once you've done that, then rest your head on the floor. And your hips should be over your knees. You have a nice stretch in your upper back right now. Set. Okay, from here, we're just going to arch up, inhale, and bring your glutes towards your heels. Once you're there, you can reach forward with your hands and drop your elbows. All right. Stop moving your knee. Kind of crawl outside your yoga mat to the right side. You can go in place. You haven't moved either. You can arch up and bring your glutes towards your heels. Still, a big stretch on your left side. Your underarm, your left rib, left back. Looking down. Reset. Right. Calling to our left side now. With our hands. Arch up once you're there, and then bring it to your heel. Very good. All right, this next one here before or I like ending with the book opener, so we'll do that at the very end. Um, but since we're here on the floor, what I want you to do is bring so a right side, so right leg comes out to the side. Have a little stretch there. And what I want to do now, I want to lean forward. Just so I'm gonna catch myself with my hands. So let's stretch. On that inner thigh. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's not painful. All right, now what I want you to do is just rotate. So your your toes right now they might be facing the screen. Now I want you to rotate your heels so your toes are now facing okay. up. Oh. Wow, it's a good stretch. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> All right, and just kind of roll your heels again so you're more relaxed. Tuck in that leg. And bring it to the first side. Start off, it comes up to the side. Those toes are pretty much on with the floor. Starting off here, 
again, just little um, changes, you know, can make a, a huge difference in stretches. All right, we'll take that heel. So tilt us up to the ceiling. Might have to adjust where your hands are. Mm. Change the stretch a little bit more. Uh. You guys could do this stretch. You should come out and run for me, my track team. <laughs> Might be more flexible than some of my athletes. Roll that heel again and relax. Oof. Awesome. All right, so I know that one could, sometimes some stretches could be a little bit tiresome or feel a sensation we haven't felt. But um, so let's transition to our last stretch, which is going to be book openers. So again, we're going to get in that clamshell position. So on our side, look in your knees. Again, little cues. Your feet are stacked, knees are stacked, your hip is right over your hip. You now rolled out two back and two forward. Right hand on top of your left hand. Then follow that right hand as it's fully extended coming out behind your back. Make sure those legs don't move. And I couldn't make it all the way on my first time. There's some days where I could do it on my first time. But sometimes I might take two or three or four. Nope, not yet. And a little bit more. Make sure you're breathing. Long breaths. Ah, almost. Make sure those knees don't leave the floor. Right. Five tries. I'm good for the first and the second, but it takes them a little tight. Okay, and we'll do eight to ten of these. Once you're done with that side, six sides. Flip on over. Again, maybe a little fuse. Oh, yeah. I left that on my first try. I was able to touch the back. Mm -hmm. right, we're going to do one more. I know I always add more at the end. We're just going to lay on this sit up position right here. This is our last one, I promise. <laughs> People keep looking at their watches like, come on. So, all we're going to do is just drop. We're going to be glued to the floor and we're just going to drop our knees off to the side. Okay, so this is good for our hip flexors. So, a couple people are ready to turn off their laptop. 
Tommy's does this. He says it's the last one, and then he does it. <laughs> Sorry. Just gonna hang out with you guys. I'm gonna try to drop those knees off to the side. Just go through back. So back should be static. Split bend. There's a lot of movement going on by your lower back. So instead of reactivating when you step over. Well, you can do in bed before you get out of bed. So. And we are done. Okay. Good stuff. How are you guys feeling? Good? Sleepy? <laughs> Loose? Okay. Let me end this recording. <laughs>